Please rise. Please leave your thoughts about the victims and families of the victims of 9 11. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Like to request the clerk to call the roll. Arthur? Here. Wydell? Here. Holmes? Here. Simmons? Here. Yes. Adams? Present. Wolf? Here. Collins? Here. Eldridge? Here. Felsley? Here. Morchuk? Here. Ligonia? Here. Clefton? Here. Mia? Here. Yes. Yes. Here. 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 The Animal Abuse Registry. And I'd like to ask the clerk to call for the reading of the seat. Notice is hereby given that on the 11th day of September 2024 at 7 p.m., the Columbia County Board of Supervisors shall hold a public hearing in the Board of Supervisors Chambers located at 401 State Street, Hudson, New York, concerning the enactment of proposed. Local Law 3 of 2024, a local law protecting animals from abuse by establishing a registry for animal abusers. Copies of said proposed local law are available at the clerk of the board's office. I order the clerk of the board, Kelly S. Vicaro, dated August 28, 2024. Thank you. Do anyone, any supervisors have any comments? Supervisor Holman. Thank you. So I want to start by saying uh, animal abuse is an issue that I think everybody in this room can agree needs to be addressed and any steps that we can take to do that, uh, we should ab absolutely do. Um, I'm not sure that an animal registry in general is, is the path forward, but like other colleagues have said, hey, if it saves one animal, let's do it. Have a um, so I, I can get on board. We had a constituent uh, business that had some concerns, not with an animal abuse registry, but with the current version that's being in front of us for consideration. Um, an advocacy group who works for pet store owners uh, reached out on July 29th after learning about the local law as it's drafted and had some concerns about the section that puts the enforcement onto the clerks within the pet store. Uh, they were very clear that they support animal registries. They're fighting very hard in the state of Tennessee to get a statewide registry. Um, but that version of the registry does not deputize clerks of pet stores to be the enforcement body for the registry. So they encouraged us to look at another local version. Right now we're going by a Dutchess County model. And they said, look at Ulster County. So Dutchess County, Ulster County, both nearby. But look at Ulster County because they do not put that deputization on the clerks to be the enforcement. One thing to remember is that we are talking about people who have been convicted of animal abuse. Um, we're talking about clerical staff, sometimes, you know, teenagers or a, an elderly person, you know, there as a, as a part time job after they retire. And we are asking them to be the ones that tell this person who knows they're not supposed to be adopting the animal, right? They were convicted, they've registered, they know they shouldn't be in there to adopt a puppy. Um, and now this clerk is the one that needs to tell this person, sorry, you can't do that. Um, and I think that's not fair. Um, some of my colleagues you know, brought up the finance. I know I wasn't at public safety, but some of the same concerns from this constituent business owner who brought up at public safety said, well, you know, gun store owners, they, their clerks have to run it, a, a bartender, you know, has to cut somebody off. There, there's a lot of examples of people that need to do this in their job, and I don't disagree. But when you become a gun shop owner, you understand the regulations that exist. When you go to work at a gun store, you understand that. 
we as a county have the ability to pass an animal abuse registry without putting that onto these clerks. We have the option. We don't have the option when it comes to liquor authority or tobacco sales or gun sales. We, we as legislators here don't get to decide that that is a state or federal issue. But we do have the ability to say, you know what? Yes, let's do an animal registry, but let's just take out the piece that is going to harm the clerks and put them potentially in dangerous situations. And so as a supervisor, I think it's upon us to be the best version possible. So I did ask the chairman of public safety to pause it one month so that we could come back to the drawing board with this new information, look at the Ulster County version. There was some things in the Ulster County version that I know the sheriff said weren't as good, but maybe we could do some kind of combination. It was really that clerical point of check that, that was the issue for me. Um, and the, the request was denied, which is okay. I'm not the chair of that committee. Um, but I do feel like if we took one more month and in talking to the chair, he was open to taking one more month to talking about how do we possibly do that? Who then enforces? Do we maybe make it illegal to attempt to purchase? At which point that clerk would simply call the sheriff's office or the state police and say, there's a crime being committed here. The sheriff could come and, you know, be the one that says, hey, you can't do this. And by the way, you've just committed a crime. So for those reasons, I think that we should strongly consider taking the time to get the best version possible. And when people say, we've been working on this a year, cool, what's one more month? And I think we should consider taking that time to make a version that- Can she interrupt you for a second? So the members of the public just have some respect for my fellow supervisor and maintain quiet while she speaks. She'll be done soon. Okay, it's very disrespectful. I'm sorry, Tishri, go ahead. Thank you. Um, so that's what I'm asking. I'm asking that we pass a registry, that we pass a registry in the best version possible and bring this business owner who lives within our community, who is saying they will be harmed by this current version to the table to work out a solution where they are burdened and we have an abuse registry. Thank you. Thank you. And the other supervisors? Supervisor Lagone. Yeah, so, this group, and I think there was actually two different groups that brought it in front of uh, public safety. Um, and the last time that we brought it to this board, there were supervisors that had some questions with basically just some wording issues. And I recall that, and I think there was a, maybe uh, I heard it differently than some of my colleagues heard it, but if, if I recall, um, they had stated that if we made a couple of those changes that they would vote for it. Um, so that's what we did. We, we brought it back. Uh, the DA looked at it again. The sheriff's department looked at it again. They were fine with it. We brought it to public safety. And a day or two before, maybe three days, um, this other law had come forward, as Tistri had mentioned, that there was an advocacy group that had some other information. That Ulster County law is has no teeth in it compared to this law. This law has a lot of teeth in it. Um, this is something that's important to the community. We represent the community here. Um, I, I'm in, uh, I have other types of businesses I've had for years and yes, it is true. I, I've made that statement. Clerks in, in the grocery stores have to stop people from buying cigarettes. They have to stop them from buying, um, liquor. You have to buy Sudafed. You have to put an ID up and you can be told no. It's a responsibility of the business owner. It's a responsibility of whoever's selling these pets that they must put a policy in place that does not put their staff at risk. Maybe the owner has to say no. We don't always have to say that the 17 year old person is gonna be or the retired person is gonna be. I think this law is strong. I think it has, has very good verbiage in it. Our sheriff's department was okay with it. Our DA's department again was okay with it. Um, it it's finally a law that has some teeth in it. The Ulster County law um, did take that portion out as my colleague stated, but it definitely didn't have the portion of the of the fines and forfeitures and the and the and the um uh what this individual could be sentenced to and and don't forget that the district attorney has discretion in all of this. so if it's something that the district attorney feels is not appropriate in this instance then the district attorney would have discretion to not do that so i feel very good about this law I, it's gone through uh committee several times it came to the full board it passed committee uh the last time um, so again, I advocate that my colleagues vote for this. Thank you, Supervisor. Supervisor Riley. Just a follow-up question for Supervisor Lagonia. Could you ran the committee on this? I didn't 
hear about the origins of the of the law a lot. I read all the other laws uh, in the counties and how much they're used or not used and how many people are in the registry. Mm -hmm. Were you given uh, at the committee level uh, the problem within our county uh, regarding multiple abusers of pets and do we have a problem here? Because I feel a little bit like a, this is a law looking for a problem. Were we given statistics that we actually have this issue here? I don't recall statistics, to be honest with you. Again, this has been a probably almost a two-year process, the original group that came to us. Um, I do know that there, there are some problems here. I can't give you specifics as to what the the amount of, of cases are, the convictions are. I don't know that. To be if, honest if, with you. if I could, Supervisor. Sure. Uh, we've had cases of animal abuse and or neglect. Uh, in my town alone, we had 30 to 40 dogs that were left unattended in the house. And they start to the point where they weren't getting food or water and they started to eat each other. Yeah. Uh, I read about that. I, I did check all the press and, and the, all the instances I could find were order issues or people with mental disabilities having multiple pets or women dying with 86 cats in their house who unfortunately <laughs> killed each other afterwards and so forth. Those don't, all those incidents to me did not seem like somebody on an animal abuse registry that would then go back and commit a, a crime that we could catch with this registry those all seem like mental health problems with large hoarder problems or other things that happened that wasn't animal abuse it was more animal neglect so i'm still not well, neglect is abuse neglect is abuse but it's a different problem they're not going to be on a registry to start with they're either elderly or dead or have mental health issues so i'm, I'm just trying to find out where where this origin and, and what the problem is that so we address the problem and somebody from the audience may be able to answer that. Yes, I, I asked you first yeah. because I yeah, thought that was absolutely. a curious. I'll wait for the public input. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. Supervisor Chinides. Yeah, thanks. Um, we have been talking about this issue for a, a long while, and I think the timing today is a little unfortunate because I feel like the way that animal abuse has been in the news in the past, over the past you know, last few days and as well as the last couple months have been really distracting. These sort of like attacks on cat ladies, but then also sort of fake false accusations around animal abuse as ways to divide the community. And I feel like that's not what this is about. This is really about like, with, this is a community that cares a lot about animals. And we also care a lot about reality and we're trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, so I really appreciate the supervisor's interest in this issue as well as a lot of people I can see in the public who care a lot about animals and a lot of people have pets and care for their pets. I just want to put out that value that this is a place where we can work together to take care of each other and also take care of the animals that we love. Um, and I think this bill has improved over the past couple of years of working on it. It's been a slow pace, but in the beginning, we had some rules where you could be on the registry even if you were just charged for something, if you weren't found guilty. Now, that seemed like a major overstep. We reversed that. This draft doesn't have that. The last time this came up, we had incorrect phone numbers. We had typos. Those have also been corrected. So I think we have moved in a better place. I still have some pretty major questions that have been brought up already today. And I'm just trying to like focus in on what this bill actually does. It was very clear as we talked about it in public safety the last time is that this bill does not prevent a first time offense or animal abuse because we already have animal abuse laws. So it's not really geared towards that. So some people are gonna commit animal abuse, but there's already a law that could potentially put them in jail. This doesn't change that. There's also a law that if you commit animal abuse a second time, you could also go to jail a second time. So the really the question is, is that do we have a problem where people are committing animal abuse serially again and again and again? And even with the risk of jail time, they're like they're still committing it. And then if that is the question, then the question is, is does this registry solve for that repeat offense problem? And so I think that's been a question that a lot of us have been asking throughout this whole process is what is the evidence that the registry would prevent this heinous act of repeat animal abuse? And I think a lot of us just haven't seen any any case examples that this is a pattern that, that this registry works, there's a lot of holes if someone wanted to get around the registry. They can, they can just merely travel to a different county to get an animal, right? Like they can just travel to a county that doesn't have a registry or doesn't have our registry. So there's a pretty big loop. It also doesn't include farm animals. So it's really how much does this registry prevent a repeat offender who doesn't have the motivation to travel but lives in the county and is just going locally to other to other places. So I think like that's the upside for the law is does it does it prevent this one very specific kind of abuse? And so those, that's a big question for me. The downside is that we know that it does place a burden on on all these sort of small businesses that are that are removing pets. Uh, and so, but the law goes into effect tonight. 
tomorrow, there is an expectation that pet stores or, or, or and, and distributors throughout the county would know that this law exists and are complying. And if they don't, they risk being fined. And so there's a question, you know, I guess for the for the media here is also like, are you going to help advertise if people know tomorrow morning that they need to they need to change their protocols and are our businesses ready to do that? And has the county done that kind of outreach so all of our businesses know how to interact with this law uh, and it does place a burden on them? And hopefully there's not someone on the registry for many years. But but what happened in the meantime is that is that businesses like PetSmart every single time they move a pet are going to have to check a registry that maybe that isn't even online yet but will be empty for quite a while and so there's just a balance between the burden that we're placing on small businesses versus the benefit that we're providing around this very specific type of animal abuser are they actually do they have, does this actually prevent it so i think those are that's the challenge that i see and i just encourage all of us to look clear-eyed on like the pros and cons of this law and is it advantageous sort of continue to refine it to get it right thanks thank you any other supervisors? Supervisor Adams. So I share the comments of all of my colleagues and also an interest in preventing um, you know, animal abuse. But I'm very concerned about the operational piece of this. I, I go back to our surrounding communities and I look at the animal abuse registries for Rensselaer, Ulster, Dutchess, Green, and Albany counties. Four of those registries have not had um, any listing since 2022. Um, one of them, which has been in, in place for five years, has had zero listings. Um, and I'm just concerned about some, the, the laws between these jurisdictions vary. Some require the, the convicted person to self-report. So that may be a barrier to having accurate numbers in terms of how many people report. Our law is different from that. It requires the prosecuting agency to report that person. But I just wonder if this registry is not a false sense of security. If let's say we do advertise it, let's say people do know about it, but if it's not being updated and people uh, it, and the information is not accurate, then it's not useful. So again, I would caution that we just spend a little more time on this and make sure that we have something that we think will give us the most value for um, the, 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 the most benefit. Thank you, Supervisor. Any other supervisors? I have just 30 more seconds. I'll be brief. Okay. okay. Um, just in response to my colleague, Mr. Lagonia's um, comment about the Ulster County law being weak, to be clear, my suggestion was that we meld the two. So Mr. Lagonia was talking about, you know, the fines are stronger in the Dutchess County version, the penalties are stronger. It's awesome. Really what I'm looking to do is eliminate that onus on the clerk. So you could literally take our current version in front of us and cross out section seven, and I would I would support this. So my issue is the clerical uh, piece. And so if Dutchess County is stronger in all of the penalties and everything else, great. I just want that clerical piece removed because again, we have a, a business owner telling us that that is gonna be difficult and an onus on them. And I don't believe it's the clerk's job, I do with one person's job. And, so anyone from the public? Lady, well, I'm sorry, I, didn't, I don't know your name. Deborah Tuttle. So Columbia County resident, as well as co-founder of Higher Ground Rescue. And you remember, uh, we were initially the ones to, to go before you to present this um, back, I think it was January, 2023. And I have to say, um, it really is very, and I say this with all respect, I really respect everyone's perspective because it is eye-opening to see the intricacies of this being rolled out and the different hands that it touches. So I really do appreciate that input. Um, when we were initially you know, getting this going in Greene County and then obviously wanted to roll it in other areas, um, we see it more as a resource for rescues and protecting them when placing an animal in someone's custody to ensure the safety of that animal. So um, it is true. I, I appreciate you saying, you know, what about the person at a store that might have to have that uncomfortable confrontation? You know, is it a confrontation? Is it just a matter of, oh, sorry, can't please report to here. So um, I think it is something that complements the laws that are already established for animal abuse but in essence, it is also a resource and a tool for us in the rescue business to make sure we check a roster first 
and to protect that animal so that we can really have our fiduciary responsibilities met in placing them somewhere safe. So you are true, you are right. There are some re uh, registries I've looked at. I'm like, no activity, what's happening? There's none in Green County. There's not a single no person there. registered. There's no one there. there. Not that there shouldn't have been. Right. Yes, because there have been cases um, that are, are very bad. And, and some people have already mentioned some of these other cases. So that obviously goes into the law and how it's navigated and, and respecting those people that are in those positions. Um, but I just don't want to lose sight as far as the side of the rescue. It's, it is definitely a resource for us to refer to if we are placing, when we are placing an animal to make sure that we are placing them safely. So, Excellent point. What's your opinion on that, clerks, on the stores? Of, would, would the law still be effective for you if the clerks were not involved? I think that, again, it sounds like it's heavy handed for a clerk to, to make that call, but it's just like a clerk at a store, no, can't sell you a suit of it or whatever. It's just a one and done. You know, you don't say anything more. I don't know if it, I don't know how far of a of a burden it will be. It's just a yes or no. You you can do it or you can't do it. But would it might be a useful resource to you if the card piece was taken out? You need it as a resource. Excuse me, this is a public hearing, so I'm gonna call on people. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, it's just a follow-up. Gunter. Mr. Gunter, everlasting hope. I appreciate the part about the um, pet store. The only pet store in Columbia County that qualifies as a pet store is PetSmart. Um, we have represented here today in favor of this law um, out of the pits. Of course, Everlasting Hope, Remedios, Cat Rescue, and Ghent. Um, Precious Pound Puppies in Hillsdale, um, Higher Ground Rescue. Um, we take on that responsibility of denying someone if they're on the registry because we feel that it's an important thing to do. Um, we don't have 17 year olds doing that. Uh, we deny applications for a multitude of reasons. This would be like the best reason that we would ever have to deny an application. And if we can save any of the pets that we take care of and nurture for months and sometimes years from going to an animal abuser, that's what we are willing to take on and do. Am I correct? Captain yes, Andrew? I am. So I think in referring to a clerk in a pet store is just a very small part of the people that are involved in adoption. And we are, that's what we do. And that's what we do every day. And we feel very strongly that this is something that we will do and we will not have a problem doing it. Uh, we have uh, an email from the president of the New York State Humane Association saying that they are in favor of uh, animal abuse registries. Is the, is the allowed to ask a question? Are we allowed to ask a question? Sure. Can you, can you just say your name? And Melinda Barbanti, and I've worked for years with Out of the Pits and Everlasting Hope. When it comes to PetSmart, which is the only pet store in Columbia County, they no longer have pets, cats, dogs in there. The animals that are there are through Everlasting Hope. And when they are adopted out, Everlasting Hope is involved in that. So there would not be a clerk that would be handling any part of it. They have their adoptions there. They have applications are there. The people come there. It's not where a clerk would be involved in any way, shape, or form. And, and unless there's another pet store in the county that I don't know about, there aren't any others. So you can't go in and buy a dog is what you're saying? No, they don't even have puppies. They have cats. And they're all everlasting hope cats. Um, PetSmart is solely a housing facility for rescue pets. So anyone that you go to, whether it's Kingston, um, they're all, who has the cats in there? Um, that all start counting. Kittens, uh, kitten angels. <laughs> kitten angels. Yes, so when you go in and you see cats dogs. in the area, there are or there are going to be another rescues. PetSmart doesn't own any of the cats or dogs that are ever adopted through a PetSmart in New York City. Um, so just wanted to clear that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. This one. Say your name, please. Uh, Deborah Dunn uh, from Avios Cat Rescue and proud Gen resident. And I appreciate that everybody's thinking about where would the burden lie when it comes to enacting this law. But what I 
want to make clear, and it echoes some of what you've heard from my uh, fellow animal bill folks here, is that there is a curtain burden, and we have that current burden, and where we're trying to ascertain whether or not it is a safe placement for the animals that we have rescued. And right now, we don't have very good objective, reliable information we can turn to. I recognize that the registry is only as good as it is implemented, and that's true with any law that gets passed. And it's not necessarily going to be a perfect or complete solution, but it gives us something that we can rely on that gives us an easy yes or no, or an easy no in certain cases, as opposed to some of what we have to rely on today, which is, you know, a Facebook group or asking somebody, hey, what do you think about this, this person who wants to adopt and hope that we get some and reliable understand. information. And so th there is a current burden and the current burden is borne by us. And we just want one additional tool to help us make better choices. Thank you. Supervisor Adams, did you have a? I did. I just wanted to point out that the way the law is currently written, it's not just pet dealers, it's any, any person or entity involved in the exchange of animals. That's purchase or giving away of animals. So that means if, if I decide to breed my Celian Terrier, I would be responsible for checking the registry to see. I couldn't give it to my cousin or my nephew or, or you know a friend of a, I would have to check the registry. So I think it is a bigger burden than just the pet stores because I think it's even harder for someone who's selling puppies out of their home or out of a kennel that's located in their home to make a call and to refuse someone. And I do, I have adopted animals from the shelter in the past. And generally that process, that vetting process takes place off the floor. It's not the person that you say, this is the cat I want to take home, that you fill out a registration, someone goes in the back, they make your phone calls to your references, they do whatever they're going to do. But it's not, it doesn't happen at a point in time in, in public with people who are not always well prepared to do that. So. Any other comments from the public? <laughs> Supervisor Holman. Um, so I think that's wonderful. I didn't know that, that you guys actually um, do the vetting for pet smart. So that's amazing. Thank you. Um, the, the definition in this law is dog or cat, which sounds like it's covered, but it's also any other domesticated animal, which it doesn't define, but when I Google it, ferrets, rabbits, guinea pigs, I know that I've bought hamsters from PetSmart before, so there could be other animals potentially that PetSmart has that is not a dog or a cat. Um, what I'm hearing tonight, and, and I love this conversation, is that we could have a win-win-win. You guys, as animal advocates and rescues, are saying, we need this tool, and we need you to do this registry so we can have this tool, because we are going to be active with it. We're going to use it. It, it. It's a tool that we need. <clears throat> PetSmart is saying this is onerous. When we rent out a ferret, we don't want our clerks to do this. And it doesn't sound like if we took out the piece where PetSmart didn't need to do that, it would take away your tool or your resource. So what I'm hearing is there's a win-win-win here where we take out the onus of PetSmart to check the ferret purchaser. We give you the resource and the tool with the high fines, all the things that Mr. Lagonia likes about Dutchess County's version. And we vote unanimously to pass a law that gets you guys what you're asking for. You're the ones that brought it to the floor. Get pet smart what they're asking for, which is please don't put this on our clerks and keeps the high fines, the high penalties. I'm seeing a solution here that everybody walks out happy. So okay. I think we should do that. Okay. Well, supervisor uh, Elsman. So we're assuming that somebody's going to walk up to a, a pet dealer and say, I want this dog. And you're saying that the clerk must make the decision right then and there. Nothing says that that's the process that has to happen. If you want to adopt an animal from, from Columbia County uh, Humane Society, you have to put in an application. I've done it and been denied. Okay. <laughs> because my income was not enough and they thought that I could not support the animal. Again, this is many, many years ago. So there's nothing saying that any any pet dealer or pet business has to put the onus on the clerk. The pet dealer may have to change their procedures. Is it a little burdensome for them? Yes. But if it prevents them from potentially giving an animal to someone who is on the registry, 
You know, that's part of owning a business. You know, there, there, there's a burden when you, and there's a responsibility as a business owner to make sure that you're doing the right thing. And in my opinion, some of these pet dealers, you know, there's, there's breeders that in my opinion should not be breeding and selling animals. But I think it's our responsibility to make sure that, you know, we have a registry. It is going to be a little, maybe a small burden to the pet dealer or the or the breeder or whatever. They don't just say, hey, I want this dog. Okay, here's your $500 and here's your dog. They say, okay, you want your dog, please give me your name and address and we'll, 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 we'll go through the process and we'll, and we'll bet you. And they, and they may get a phone call that says, sorry, I can't sell to you. You're on the registry. The person knows they're on the registry. So that's my take on it. I, I don't think it's a 17 year old clerk that's going to be making the decision. I think it, I think we put the owners back on the business owner. Well, business owners have a responsibility to, to conduct business properly. And that's that's my take. Thank on you, it. Supervisor. Mrs. Gunter. We have a very close relationship with our local pet smart, and we have for many, many, many years. And they can't open their store if they don't have a manager working that day. So the manager wouldn't allow a clerk to make this important decision if it's in, indeed that much of a problem for them. The manager would step up and do that. And I neglected to include that Ron Perez from the Columbia Green Humane site is on board, as I was mentioning everyone that was here, but he is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I just wanted to, you actually <coughs> stated pretty much what I was going to state, but the term burden has been used here by everybody in the room. What burden? If we save one cat, one dog, how is that a burden? Any licensed business in this state, licensed business has a responsibility, regardless of it's whether it's telling somebody no to buy a, a pet, or it's me not selling liquor, or it's somebody that has a, a license, a, a lawyer, a, 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 an architect, an engineer, or anybody has a res some responsibility to the public and has to stand up. If you want to be in business, that's part of it. I don't look at it as a burden. I look at it as part of what we need to do to protect. We can protect one dog or one cat. That is not a burden to me. To me, that is a responsibility of any business that wants to take part in selling those types of things. So I agree with you, Should we limit it to cats and dogs? I guess like the gap I'm seeing is the ferret or rabbit at PetSmart with the clerk. <laughs> It says companion animal, so or pet. Domesticated animals. Companion animal. Companion animal, animal or pet. A person animal. having residence from getting enlisted on the. I mean, it's not. Doesn't say cats and dogs. It does. If you look at the definitions at the front of the law section, front, definitions yeah. companion mm -hmm. animal or pet is defined as any dog or cat or any other domesticated animal normally maintained in or near the household. So I looked up, I Googled domesticated animal, and there was a whole list including chickens and goats. But the ones that I saw that would be maintained in or near the household would be a rabbit, a guinea pig, a ferret. So again, they do this search for pet smart for the dogs and cats. I just think there's a solution where everyone's happy. Maybe it's striking the domesticated animal and leaving it at dogs and cats, cats. in which case pet smart doesn't care because you guys are doing it. I'm going to take one last question. Oh, I'm sorry. I know. I'm sorry. I didn't know your hand was up. Yeah. Sure. Your hand is up first. I apologize. Thank you. I think the key is to be proactive here because, as Mr. Housey said too, is that it's just, PetSmart is notified that you know that PetSmart is going to do the search. That's hopefully going to be prevented someone who is on the registry to even go there because they know that's going to be chilling. Right. So, also, I think when it comes to ownership, you know, to um, to the clerk, right? The, you know, the clerk has to understand that the vetting process can be slower. So now this can slow down the vetting process. So they can be taken out of that loop, like Mr. Houston said. So I think to say, to wait till it happens, then come back. I think now you're, you, you know, you're not being proactive. So I think by taking this law, saying you're serious about this, and also a series about being proactive and saving that one cat, saving that one animal, and preventing someone to come in to a you know to a pet smart because they can, because they're not going to be part of that process or that vetting process. I think it's a mistake. I think that once this law is in place, I think if no one's on the registry, maybe that's a good thing because it's lurking, right? 
because now no one's going and trying to buy something or trying to get a, you know be part of this right because now they know they're not going to buy an animal so if no one gets put on this registry right maybe that's a good thing right because then they know they're not going to abuse someone right? I, mean, I i think it's, it's time to be proactive and and move this along thanks thank you for your input there was a chairman. Somebody got their hand up. Okay, Chair. Uh, Supervisor Knox. That's the sheriff had his hand up. I'm sorry, Sheriff. That's okay, Chair. I'm Dad Grant, Public County Sheriff. Um, this gentleman makes a good point. And, and, uh, he stated a lot of things that, that I was going to bring up. I mean, uh, you know, law enforcement try to be proactive. We try to stop things before they happen. So things you know, people aren't victimized. And in New York State, uh, you know, our pets are considered property. And my job here as a sheriff and the sheriff's office as a whole is to protect persons and property here in front of each other. I understand the supervisor's concern. I also understand uh, Supervisor Hesley's uh, statements about changing protocol. And there's, when things change, procedures need to change. Um, I don't pretend like I know how to run PetSmart. I don't. I don't want to. Um, but sometimes we need to look at the big picture. So if we can look, into the future into this crystal ball and we see this rise in of animal abuse and the amount of media it's getting and the amount of attention it's getting look on social media any day of the week and you're going to see lost pets abandoned pets uh you know missing my dog missing this we don't know where these pets go we're unable to find them they just don't disappear um so is it a matter of uh, these animals now being taken used for whatever purposes maybe maybe not we don't know um but i think this with this animal abuse registry will provide us is some concrete uh, evidence on who can and who can't or a pet based on criminal offenses, prior criminal offenses. We're not saying because we think you're going to abuse an animal, we're going to put you on a registry. You've been convicted of a crime, and now you're going to be put on a registry based on determination by a court. And, uh, you know, the district attorney's, uh, uh, you know, desire for you to be on this registry based on what his feelings are based on this uh, criminal case. So the sheriff's office, if this bill is uh, you know uh, enacted, uh, we'll do our best to uh, oversee it properly, effectively. Um, but if we start to put more and more burden on the sheriff's office, that's where the administrative fees come up as well. So the financial burden to the person is going to go up. I know there's a concern of duty these meetings. Um, $125 is not going to cover all the expenses of the sheriff's office. So we're we're taking on that burden because we feel that strongly that this is an important issue. <laughs> and uh, I'll continue to support the bill. If it needs to be augmented, we'll deal with that. But uh, I see it being sufficient on the face at this point. Uh, if PetSmart has it, this uh, disgruntled uh, customer that comes in, they can always call us. They do now. Um, if any other entity has an issue, they can call us. Uh, if there is uh, later on a, an attempt to put into this bill where someone attempts to purchase an animal after being on a registry, it's a no brain. Uh, you're going to call it before you notify. But we're going to come and arrest them based on that attempt. Um, I have no issue with that either. Uh, but this is a proactive, uh, a proactive attempt at stopping animal abuse and stopping future abuse to uh, to humans. So um, I'm in support of it. Once again, uh, I, I understand everyone's uh, opinions here, but I think this is an important uh, law, and I, and I fully support it. On that note, I'm going to close the public hearing. And we need to do a roll call vote. MacArthur. Yes. Whitehill. Yes. Holmes. Yes. Simmons. Yes. Stacks. Adams. No. Wolf. Yes. Collins. Yes. Riley. Um, I'm going to vote no because I think it should be clarified to cats and dogs only to address the loophole. Eldridge. Yes. Helsley. Yes. Dvorak. Yes. Ligonia. Yes. Cousin. No. Yeah. Chimitas. No. Mustman. Scalera? Yes. Fuzzy? Yes. Holton? So I really like it when there's solutions where everybody walks away happy, which in these days is very hard to do. And I think there are 
two easy ways to get there. You remove the other domesticated animal and leave it just dogs and cats, or you remove the bird being responsible. Two easy ways, everyone's happy. So I would absolutely vote yes, but this version I can't because it's going to not get us where we could be. So no. All right. Yes. Not. Yes. Oh, yes. One fifty six A forty point four forty point four nay and three point eight stain the local law passes. Thanks. Any comments from supervisors? Supervisor Weigel. This is in the town of Clover. Just to let supervisor go, I've been over this property. It's basically a laid out flat. It's a swamp next to our landfill. That's what he's looking to buy it for, to protect his property. Been there for years like that. There's no reason why we should keep it. We can put it back on the tax roll. And again, what are you going to get for it? It's just a swampy area that's been there forever. So in my opinion, this is something we should do. We need the money into the county, and it's a piece of land we'd never do anything with. So get some money back. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments from supervisors? I take it that means you're happy with this. <laughs> it was something. <laughs> I appreciate it. That's the <laughs> uh, any super any comment from the public? With that, I'm gonna close the public hearing. MacArthur. Yes. Wiga. Yeah. Booms. Yes. Simmons. Yes. Sachs. Adams. Yes. Wolf. Yes. Collins. Yes. Riley. Yeah. Um, Eldridge. Yes. Uh, Helsley. Yes. Dvorak. Yes. Ligonia. Yes. Cousin. Yes. Mia. Yes. Mia. Yes. Musman. Uh, Scalera. Yes. Duzzy. Yes. Holtland. Yes. Morrell. Yes. Not. Yes. Skoda. 180 eyes, 19.8 names, motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it just blurred out. So, I need a motion to pay the bills for another report and file the minutes within the clerk's office. So, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, I'd like to ask Supervisor Lagonia to come up here to read a. Uh, Proclamation. And the sheriff and under sheriff, if you beat them up. Yeah. Yeah. Sheriff's proclamation. Declaring the week of September 15th through September 21st, 2024, as Sheriff's Week in Columbia County. Whereas the office of the sheriff has been an integral part of the criminal justice system in New York State and in Columbia County throughout our history, having been established in the state's first constitution in, 19, in 1777 and continued in every succeeding constitution. 
having been one of the original constitutional offices guaranteed to the people upon the founding of our county. And whereas despite changes in its function, status, powers, during its long history, the Office of Sheriff has maintained a continuous existence, preserved its distinguishing heritage, and continues to be an essential component of our criminal justice community. And whereas the Office of Sheriff has evolved into a modern, professional, full-service law enforcement agency, manned by fully trained police officers using state-of-the-art technology and applying the latest and most advanced theories and practices in the criminal justice field. And whereas the Office of Sheriff is unique in the community and the duties of the office go far beyond the traditional role of keeper of the peace and extend into many facets of public service, including maintaining the county jail, providing security in our courts, dispatching emergency services, and serving and executing civil process for our courts. And whereas as a constitutionally empowered office directly responsible to the people, the ancient office of sheriff remains even today responsive and accountable to the public it serves. And whereas it is fitting to celebrate the historical contributions of the office of sheriff and the significant role that the sheriffs play in our modern criminal justice system. <clears throat> now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the county, that the Columbia County Board of Supervisors, do recognize the important service provided to the citizens of the county by Sheriff Donald J. Kraft and the members of the sheriff's office, and do hereby proclaim September 15th. To September 21st, 2024, to be Sheriff's Week in Columbia County. Given under my hand in the Privy Seal of Columbia County at the Supervisor's Chambers in Hudson, New York, this 11th day of September, 2024, Matt B. Morrell, Chairman, Columbia Board of Supervisors. I just want to thank everyone for recognizing the hard work that the men and the women in the sheriff's office do in all law enforcement. Even though it's the sheriff's week, I think it includes all law enforcement. And it's even more uh, touching today to, to receive this as it's 9-11 uh, and uh, all the souls that were lost, and, uh, including our law enforcement first responder personnel. So thank you again. Appreciate it. Okay, I'd like to request the clerk read the resolutions. Resolution 333 of 2024 and 351 of 2024 by Supervisor President. Mr. Chairman, I hope these resolutions were adopted. All right, second a motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution 352 of 2024 to 368 of 2024 by Supervisor Janitas. Mr. Chairman, I offer these resolutions for adoption. Second a motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very. Any supervisors have any business to bring to the board? Just tree's got a party on Saturday, right? Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that? Oh, the client is Mark Connor. Yeah. That's your own brother's party. <laughs> and everyone should come. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's 11 to 3 at the Chatham Fairgrounds. There's going to be a huge repair cafe. You can bring your broken stuff to get fixed. A countywide free store. Multiple towns have been collecting items over the last six weeks. It'll all be free. Um, great vendors, live music, food truck. Should be a really fun time. Really fun time. I'm sorry, I have a conflict. I'm actually out of town. But, <laughs> but we'd like to recognize Don Meltz for all his coordination and Jolene Race, who's yes. come back to help us coordinate this event. So thank you, Don Meltz and Jolene Race and everyone else involved. Here, here. Well, is it tomorrow senior day at the VFW? Yes, it's tomorrow. It starts at 11 o'clock. Senior day? Yeah. It's really neat. Any other supervisors? Okay. Um, prior to adjourning, uh, I'd just like everyone to take a moment of silence for VA and Judge Chaika, who passed away, as I'm sure everybody knows. So if we can take a moment of silence. Yeah, entertain a motion to adjourn.
So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Before we, uh, we adjourn, Tom Fisher, who's our newest Jim. civil service. <laughs>